team captured the area. Can I help you? Yes, my name is Bond. James Bond. Enemy team captured the area. Activated. Enemy team captured the area. He always did have an inflated opinion of himself. Precisely at your groin. Captured the area. And you've had your six. Feathers and he still can't fly. You hit the enemy. I think he got the point. Hello everyone, and welcome back to World of Warships Blitz with Terry, where today we have something rather obscure for you. Uh, this is... Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna let you guess, right? <laughs> First of all, the Austro-Hungarian flag actually makes sense here. Yes, this is an Austro-Hungarian ship. Uh, sort of looks like a destroyer, and if you look at the shape of the hull, and obviously given the fact that it is part of the Austro-Hungarian Navy, and Austria-Hungary sort of ceased to exist <laughs> quite a while back, uh, it looks very much like a First World War design. And uh, in fact it is. It also has, as you can see, three guns in the typical First, war, first World War configuration with a very open, just you know, gun platform, and it also has a fair amount of torpedo launchers. In fact, it has apparently four torpedo launchers. And it's at tier 9. This is the Jäger, which is a German word for hunter, which probably most of you know, given that uh, it's a rather common word to be used in all kinds of situations. But um, uh, what in the world is a, uh, is a 19... Early, early 20th century destroyer, First World War vintage, doing at tier 9. 
<laughs> and how is that even going to work? Well, uh, let's do a very brief dip into uh, the actual description that we're here that we've got here. So, uh, this is all somewhat correct, but not quite. <laughs> At least from what I could find in literature. Um, yes, Austro-Hungary began working on a project to build destroyer leaders. This is not one of them. Uh, they were. Uh, they have they had a uh, a fair amount of draft designs, and uh, they developed several projects. One of them presented in 1917 uh, for the construction of a 2,000 ton torpedo boat. That is incorrect. That was not a torpedo boat, although, uh, and it wasn't a destroyer leader either. Uh, the 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 Austro-Hungarians called it a, a torpedo fahrzeug, which would roughly translate to a torpedo vessel of sorts. So obviously given that the actual torpedo boats that they had at the time, and, and torpedo boats were having a very singular purpose in that they weren't meant to get into gunfights with other things, they were having the very singular purpose of uh, carrying torpedoes on a relatively small cheap vessel towards uh, large warships and uh, threaten them with that. And they usually were about a tenth of the size, so we're talking about 250 tons displacement. Uh, to, to displacement rather than 2,000 tons. In fact, the largest destroyer that the Austro-Hungarians got uh, running was about half the size of this thing. That said, they actually had a plan for such a torpedo vessel, which was effectively, you could say, an absolutely oversized torpedo boat, but also a destroyer, because they also felt that this thing needed guns. And not just any kind of like 90 millimeter, 88 millimeter guns, no, something rather substantial. So, uh, and also it wasn't done in 1917, the proposal was from 1918. But then, you know, the war ended and Austro-Hungary ended and then never, nothing really ever came of these things. But this was one of the designs that they felt would make sense for operations in the Mediterranean. And uh, in fact, uh, it, it did not have that many torpedo launches. In fact, it, had, it, it was supposed to have, I think, uh, two triple launches, not four of them. So what do we have here? Um, well, isn't really anything we can compare this thing to. So let's um, uh, let, let's just go through the uh, let's just go through the stats, and you get a bit of an idea here. Uh, yes, this is a First World War design at tier nine. What have we done to get that to work? Well, uh, first of all, it is very very fast, and uh, with a third with a forty knot uh, forty knot max speed. And uh, a five second turn time is not the most maneuverable out there, but it is obviously also a very big ship. So it's a big, thin, long ship. Uh, somewhat reminds me of an Okotnik, <laughs> just with fewer gun turrets. Uh, the guns are actually 150 millimeter guns, and these 150s did exist. These were the secondaries on the Tegetov uh, battleship. Uh, she gets three of them, 350 mils, and uh, 450s, they are actually the armor piercing isn't that great. Uh, the high explosive is pretty good though, but you only get three of them. And the eight kilometer range is distinctly average for these kind of gun calibers. So the guns are a bit of an afterthought. Well, Terry, how about the torpedoes then? Uh, yes, we get uh, what looks like Italian torpedoes with a 48 second reload, which is pretty fa fast but with a 2,000 points of alpha damage. Well then, um, this reminds me of something. Hang on a minute, I'll be right back. Because there is in fact a ship that has uh, comparable torpedoes, and that is the tier six cruiser on the European <laughs> line that uh, ended up being a Greek ship that has a relatively similar torpedoes. Uh, only that the tier six version of the torpedoes do more damage. <laughs> Well, in return, uh, we have a 9.6 kilometer range, which is pretty good, and an 86 knot torpedo speed. So uh, they don't have the typical European destroyer line sort of gimmick of having a high flooding chance. The thing is, though, you can put 12 of them in the water <laughs> and, and uh, you can, in under a minute, you can do it again. <laughs> so even with a 10% flooding chance, if you get these torpedoes on target and with that speed, it's not actually that difficult. Uh, you're not gonna do a huge amount of damage, but you might get a flood or two. 
she does have absolutely no AA, given that this is a tier, uh, this is a First World War design where naval aviation wasn't quite a thing yet. But with 5.76 kilometers, actually has a very, very good base surface detection. So, um, we're going to look at that. The Jäger. Uh, what can we do with this thing? Well, you get the choice between uh, more speed and better acceleration or more torpedo damage and flooding chance. Now, don't be fooled. You're not going to get the flooding chance up to 17%. It's uh, plus 7% multiplicative. So you're not going to get an awful lot out of it. And the damage is so low that the extra 3% isn't going to make any difference either. I would recommend going with the advanced engine on this thing. Uh, you have the choice between a historical camo, which gives you range on the main battery and on the torpedoes, a traverse and better surface detection. So that's a good one. Or you get a sort of steampunk alternative, which has uh, the nice inscription of Jäger next to it. And that gives us a torpedo uh, torpedo range and torpedo speed rather than main battery range and torpedo uh, uh, torpedo range. Sorry, so this gives us torpedo speed instead of main battery. It's just weirdly weirdly sorted here. So you can get 4% uh, extra torpedo speed instead of the main battery. This is actually probably the better camo, although I quite like the main battery for sort of making use of uh, situations where you've triggered a Damacon. So the high explosive is actually not terrible. Uh, both good camos, both worth getting. I am going to obviously sail with the historical one. Now, you don't get an awful lot of choice. You don't get the Japanese torpedo reload module. So the best thing is sort of you can do is the main battery mod one here for turret traverse. And the rest is an obvious uh, set for a destroyer with uh, the propulsion and the concealment mod. You could even go for a speed build, but I really wouldn't recommend it because with the concealment mod, you are under uh, you are under five kilometer on your base concealment, and I think there isn't going to be an awful. And I'm going I'm not going to go through all the destroyers at tier nine and, and check, but I don't think there's an awful lot that can beat that. This is an extremely sneaky destroyer. Oh, and it also has a radar. Three radars, because of course a 1917 ship would have radars on it. <laughs> Especially something that is effectively an absolutely humongous torpedo boat. <laughs> now, this is obviously the um, hypothetical timeline post-World War II refit here on this <laughs> surviving ship. Yeah, now nah, there, there's no good reason for it. It does get a good speed boost, however. So a speed build is not a terrible idea, but I really would go with the, with the, uh, the surface detection here. So then, um, what's, uh, what kind of commander build do you want? Well, there isn't really anything that you need to that you need to uh, to keep in mind here. Uh, and none of this is particularly important because you don't have anything to buff your radar, and uh, the only thing that's really important is the engine overload. Uh, I am sailing with the APCS, even though the armor piercing is pretty dreadful on these ships. But uh, it does help do a little bit more damage against destroyers. But uh, the high explosive is a bit better, honestly, in general. And uh, it doesn't make a massive difference. So like, the commander build is not hugely impactful. But as usual, we are going to see two battles. So uh, this is a bit of a meme ship. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm just going to start with it. Because this is, an ex this is a hyper-specialized ship. Uh, so it, it's not so much of, um, you know is this really like a good all-purpose ship? But uh, what kind of nonsense can we get ourselves up to with this thing? And what kind of hilarious things can we do with this? That's more what I'm thinking. The first battle we are playing with the regular camo, so only 3% surface detection, but still very good uh, against uh, it's a carrier battle. Against Midway, a double Izumo, Wooster, Sejong and a Black Shima. Uh, a gunboat, this is not, so <laughs> don't try. Uh, most of the time you're better off just being completely undetected and uh, and spamming torpedoes at everything that moves or doesn't. But you're in a very fast ship and uh, I do have a bot with me here, so I'm 
I, I'm effectively alone. I'm switching to armor piercing in case I hit enemy destroys, but most of the time I don't want to fire my guns. With the engine boost up and the preheating, she gets up to 47 knots, which is very quick. And we have good long range fast reloading torpedoes and an absolutely hilariously good concealment. So I'm gonna cup A, but uh, I'm, I'm I'm already planning to uh, to to turn uh, to turn starboard here and uh, just use that island and head over head over towards B as well because we don't have a destroyer and uh, okay there is a um, okay in that case we'll deal with the bot destroyer just so we can secure the capture circle and yes you can absolutely outspot these things uh, we have there they're cruisers now, I did say this isn't a gunboat but. Uh, yeah, it, it isn't. The guns are the guns aren't great. They do reload relatively quickly, but uh, they are pretty terrible. And I'm just waiting for the bot to get in range to drop some torpedoes on him. There you go. That should do the trick. A uh, couple more gunshots in the side, and that's a dead bot because these are very fast torpedoes. And that means we have the capture circle secured. And now we go undetected because that is almost already shooting at me. I just have to wait for my detection bloom to go down and then we start uh, well then we start uh, the fun because there's also a Wooster out there so I uh, know I really don't want to be here uh, run away <laughs> fortunately it's an HE Wooster uh, if you're in a destroyer and the Wooster is unloading HE at you that's always a good sign because uh, now he switched to AP okay never mind that <laughs> uh, there's a Sejong over there I don't want to tussle with that thing either but uh, there's an Izumo out here and uh, I'm just going to use the radar to find him. There he is. And then I am going to drop some torpedoes in his general direction. And then I'm going to set myself up behind the island here. So I don't get spotted by the Sejong. Because I don't want to get into that, into a fight with that thing. Now it has deep water torpedoes. But uh, uh, it's got lots of nasty guns. Okay, it's almost slowed right down. But um, we're going to get a couple of torpedoes. Well, yeah, five torpedoes is not bad. And there goes our flood. Is he damage controlling the flood? No, it's ticking. So either he doesn't have one ready, but uh, if that's the case, I am going to try and find a position where the Sejong isn't isn't uh, isn't spotting me, and I can unload uh, I can unload the guns at the Izumo while I'm okay. Now we here we go. So this is a good spot, and as you can see, the torpedoes are almost reloaded already. So at that case, in that case, we'll tr we'll try to set a perma fire. Maybe another. Oop, the Izumo. And that was a good blind shot from the Izumo. Uh, well done. I was a bit, uh, I was getting a little cocky there. <laughs> so that was a good HE blind shot from the Izumo. The, I was unspotted at the time, so well done. But he has got the Permafire burning and uh, I can just go undetected. So I'm just going to wait for my uh, my bloom to go down again because again, there's a Sejong. I, I see you there. Yep, hello. Uh, do I need to deal with you? Uh, okay, engine boost up. And I should, if you look at my detection radio, uh, detection circle, I should be, uh, I should be reasonably safe here, and uh, I can just torpedo the Izumo again, who is slowing right down. So I'm gonna drop the torpedoes a bit behind, and then secure the capture circle. We are pretty good, pretty well ahead on points at this at this stage. And uh, I don't have to use my guns anymore. We're holding all three cups. We're two kills ahead. And we'll see how much we can do about that Izumo. There he goes. Uh, plonkety plonk plonk. Uh, eight, on, only eight torpedoes on target. So he survives. Uh, which is mildly annoying. But uh, uh, there is also a cruiser over in C cup. But as you can see from the, from the very tiny detection circle. I can just happily... Um, okay, the, the, the cruiser in C cup. Uh, uh, the ship in C cup is dead. And um, it wasn't a cruiser, it was a battleship. And I'm just waiting for my torpedoes to reload to un uh, to unleash them on that unsuspecting Izumo over there. Uh, two of them should be should do the trick, and then uh, we can. Uh, well, we need, we are actually not needed over here. We can head over and see if we can do something about about the carrier, because that Izumo is already dead, presumably. Otherwise, oh come on, Monty! That was like a millisecond before my torpedoes hit. That was my kill. <laughs> Oh well, uh, I'm not going to complain. Uh, there is the carrier, there's the midway. Uh, last heal up. And uh, uh, I mean the game's won at this point. Uh, Monty is, going pro is probably going to go down there. Uh, serves him right. But uh, I'll, I will have to actually drop torpedoes already uh, because the midway is coming under fire from a lot of things. So 
Uh, where is he going? Okay, he's backing off. Oops, sorry, Shima. Uh, didn't see you there. Uh, took one of your torpedoes off. But yeah, look, look, look at that. <laughs> look, look at that poor midway. <laughs> look at that. Absolute, look at the absolute soup of things coming. <laughs> I'm sorry, I need a second. <laughs> yeah, the, um, and and he <laughs> can't. The midway was already dead, Shima. He couldn't control his he couldn't control his planes anymore. All you had to do was <laughs> okay. <sighs> sorry. <sighs> Uh, just this leaves the Wooster and um, hello Wooster, why are you backing off? Okay, uh, here I have some torpedoes. <laughs> so uh, lots of torpedoes, and I mean it's a Wooster. He's got sonar, so he can potentially he could potentially dodge them, but he's the last ship alive, and um, I'm just I'm not, I'm just going to open up on it. See, see, this is what I mean when I say this is a meme ship. <laughs> it's just it's like the Okotnik, but with 10 kilometer range. It just dumps uh, it, it just dumps a massive amount of Oh really? That was hitting game. That was hitting totally. Was hitting anyway. Uh, it just dumps massive amounts of uh, individually relatively useless, probably like 450 millimeter torpedoes in there. First World War vintage, but uh, as a certain, um, say certain heavy German heavy cruiser found out the hard way, uh, just because something is um, is from the from the previous century <laughs> doesn't mean it can't hurt you very badly. <laughs> And the Smolensk obviously takes the um, takes the uh, takes the top of the team here, but uh, this gives you a bit of an impression uh, what you can, what kind of shenanigans you get shenanigans you can get yourself into with uh, with this ship. So of course I went and did it again. Uh, this time no carrier, and we're top tier. So Isamo, uh, Black Veneto, Nebraska. Okay, so there is a carrier. Uh, Atlantico, Takao, Yugomo, and Benson. And we're playing epicenter on Pacific Islands. Now you do have some use, but you don't have smoke screens, and your guns are abysmal. So you are relying on your torpedoes to deal with enemy destroyers, which means you probably you usually don't want to get yourself into gunfights with enemy destroyers if you can avoid them. But uh, I should be uh, I should be the fastest destroyer out here, so I can rush the the central ring, and with a under a minute reload on the torpedoes. I am actually uh, quite confident to uh, to early to to drop some predictive torps early on and see if we're going to hit anything. So let's make our way into the capture circle and then uh, try to deal with cap deal deal with cap control. Hopefully push the enemy destroyers out and uh, just you know have fun. Uh, you are not going to sink enemy battleships with these torpedoes in a single strike even if you get all of them on target unless they are in very low health and yeah i'm fully in range of of that circle so i can get um, i can get two sets of torpedoes out uh, pretty early here uh, just on the off chance that there's somebody sailing here uh, but yeah so you do need to navigate in stealth and just kind of keep unloading these torpedoes i think the touch can one of the uh, Tashkent premiums, Tashkent-based premiums was doing was having a similar setup, where uh, you you just have to spam them, and uh, you you rack up the, you rack up a decent amount of damage eventually. Oh, and look at it, we hit something. <laughs> and see, that was a destroyer there somewhere or something else. Um, but there comes the there come the Nebraska's plane, so unfortunately I'm now spotted, which means uh, radar up. Let's see if we can find what's there, uh, and it is the Benson. But uh, he's full health, so he wasn't the one I hit, unless he damaconed that. Uh, I, sorry, unless he, he repaired that. So uh, let's drop some torpedoes in the general direction of the Benson, and um, uh, just uh, see if we can uh, see if we can keep him out of the capture circle. And uh, yes, I think uh, we have kept him out of the capture circle. Uh, don't be don't be too upset if your torpedoes don't hit anything because. <laughs> Because it doesn't take long for them to reload, and while the guns aren't great, you can still entertain yourself with them. I mean, the Benson is obviously outgunning me by a fair margin, but I'm not the only one shooting at him. And we are controlling all the three capture circles, so uh, this... Um, and I, I am keeping the Benson out, and he is coming under fire from the rest of my team, so this is going reasonably well. And my torpedoes are almost reloaded already, so um, Amagi, what are you doing? 
Um, Amagi, that's a Benson. Why are you rushing a Benson? Uh, okay, we've already lost one battleship, and that Amagi is uh, is determined to commit suicide by Benson. So, um, yeah, what what on earth? <laughs> All right, there's Yugamo. See if we can do something about this guy. You don't get my capture circle. Stay out of there. But there's also a Veneto out there. And these things have semi armor piercing. That is nasty. I don't want to have anything to do with it. Uh, so, target rich environment. And obviously the Benson's right there. But uh, let's see if we can um, make the life of the Yugamo interesting. By, by Now, in all fairness, nobody knows what this thing is capable of because it's unreleased as of yet. Hello, Mr. Benson. I haven't forgotten about you. Yes, 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 you've got torpedoes. Great. But I'm dealing with a Yugamo right now. And yes, you can get five torpedoes on target and you're still not, destroy not sinking the enemy destroyer. That's the thing with these torpedoes. They don't just do a lot of damage. And there is also a Tarkal, so I do have to run away now because there are going to be... Uh, uh, on top of the Benson torpedoes that I just avoided, there are going to be Tarkal torpedoes in the water. And yes, Tarkal is nasty. Oh yeah, no Benson knife radar. <laughs> and uh, I mean, it, again, the Benson had no way of knowing that. But uh, team, if you if you wouldn't mind... Where's my team, actually? Um, yes, we have probably lost the... Have we lost the Amagi? I'm not having paid attention. Oh no, he's still out there. He's still rushing the Benson. Um... Okay, I have no idea what that Amag is up to, but uh, Benson has ma has managed to es uh, escape in the smoke screen because, yeah, as a gunboat, this thing is, this thing completely sucks. And uh, yeah, that Amag is very dead, so I'm not even going to bother, but I am going to try, because my torpedoes are already reloaded, to uh, get them all on target against the Takao. And I am trying to get, once again, undetected, because my team is dying like flies now that the Amag is dead as well. And I might not reach the taco in time, we'll see. But uh, uh, there is, uh, uh, there are some taco torpedoes. And uh, yes, we have actually managed 11 hits, <laughs> 11 torpedoes, 12 torpedo hits on the taco. And he's still alive. And my team is completely collapsing, unfortunately, at this point. <laughs> uh, and uh, there's only a battleship left here. So uh, the very low, low health Atlantico over there and see if we can see that we can finish that thing off. I'm tempted to fire my guns, but there's a Veneto over there in the center cup. And I really don't want to do that. So uh, we've lost anyway. There's no way we're, we're, we're ahead on points, but the enemy team is now holding all three capture circles. There are three, uh, there, there are two minutes remaining. And uh, just the points income is going to be too much that, um, uh, that we are not going, we're not going to be able to win this on points, and I'm not going to get away from this here because I am just in the middle, sandwiched between an Izumo, and we're getting the Atlantico. He's not dead, and um, but there, there's the Veneto out there. Once the battleship on the friend, uh, the friendly battleship dies, and uh, the Veneto can one-shot me, so I don't want to get spotted here. And the Veneto isn't stupid; he's not coming out of there. Uh, yeah. Once our battleship dies, there's absolutely no way that um, that I'm pulling back enough points. So at this point, uh, yeah, uh, I, I have no chance of, of winning this still. So I'm just going to have some fun uh, dunking torpedoes into um, into the enemy team for uh, for fun and profit, really. But uh, yeah, um, not an awful lot we can do. Uh, they they are going to take they are going to take this on points once they uh, once they take down the friendly battleship, and. Um, I'm not going to catch the Veneto. I might be a minute left. Uh, okay, they, they're going to they're going to pull ahead on points now, mainly because of the Veneto that sits in the in the central area. Maybe if I can take the Izumo down, but I don't think I have the torpedo Alpha Strike to take down the Izumo. I've got to be careful with the Veneto. There's also the uh, there's the Yugamo, and the enemy team is now ahead on points. So I do need to to sink something. Uh, and I'm spotted. Oh, there's ne Nebraska would have been a good target, but I didn't see him, and he was too far away back there. Yeah, I'm, I'm spotted, and I have no way out of here. So, uh, no way to sink the Izumo. If I had managed to get the Nebraska down, we may have had a chance, but uh, unfortunately, Nebraska uh, was too far away, and I hadn't actually spotted him at this point. So, I'm just gonna sink some more torpedoes into the Izumo just for some, uh, for some score. So, uh, is the uh, is the Jäger a good ship? Yes, and surprisingly, yes, it is actually a fun ship. Now, it's a bit of a meme boat, uh, but the combination of uh, of these hilarious torpedoes and the uh, and the 
uh, this, the great stealth and the fast speed means that this ship can actually rack up a fair amount of damage on unsurprising targets if they don't pay attention. And uh, as such, is a really, really fun ship to play. And I don't even mind that it's tier 9. So for me, this is a, uh, a ship a little bit like the Horningen. Uh, it's, sort of, it, it's sort of a bit gimmicky, but um, it's hilariously fun to play. <laughs> and it's just, just the face of any, every enemy player who sees a soup of 12 torpedoes coming at them at, probably almost, at almost twice the speed of a French destroyer. Uh, uh, that's just worth it by itself. So this is a really fun ship and um, and and can do surprisingly well despite being uh, First World War Vintage with uh, with this funny loadout. So yeah, there you have it. That is the Jäger, a fun, gimmicky, unique tier 9 premium destroyer and well worth it in my opinion. And that's it for me today. Thanks everybody and I will see you next time. Bye bye.